that video helped me grow to 10,000 subscribers in one month. And I was making a lot more. So my basically from that video, my whole channel got bigger. That was the beginning of 2023. And that's when I decided, okay, let me do the my digital nomad thingy now. Welcome back to another episode of Small Girl Big Talk, where we talk about all the big stuff in adulthood, like self-identity, relationships, money, health, and all the other important things that you care about. I'm your host, Wendy, and my hope for this podcast is for it to bring comfort and help you to feel a little bit less alone in your adulthood journey. And today... Here with me, I have a very special guest, and her name is Dina. She is my friend from university days. And mm-hmm. honestly, like I still think it's quite surreal for me to be having this session right now because I remember just a year ago when you were living your digital nomad life and when you were visiting Malaysia, I was telling you that, hey, I bought this mic, I'm going to start a podcast and here we are. Now we are recording this episode together. So do you want to say hi, Dina? Yeah. Hi, everyone. It's quite exciting. And yeah, I'm very familiar with Wendy's place because I was I actually stayed there for a couple days last year. So good to see you again because it's been I mean, I didn't see you since university. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like we've both been on a path where we're creating content and trying different things and yeah I'm sure we'll get into that a lot more uh today yeah yeah so like the reason that I wanted to have you on on this uh, on this episode right and like I would say the intention it's really to kind of offer my listeners a little bit of a behind the scenes of how it's like to be a full-time content creator now and to inspire those who have been thinking about it to inspire them to chase their dreams so I okay I'm gonna go right into it right so I remember fresh off university and after that you have a pretty steady nine to five job how did you go from transitioning from having a nine to five to taking that leap into being a content creator like I don't mind if you can go in depth into your story take your time to tell us how the journey has been for you okay yeah so right out of university and we both went to business school I got a job working in a government office in Vancouver it was business development and international trade related Um, I Ever since university, I've always wanted to, my dream was to be a digital nomad and to have some kind of business online and then travel. And so it was always in the back of my mind, but I did what, like, uh, what I, I guess supposed to do. And I graduated, got a job. And after one year of working at the job, I thought, Hmm, maybe I should start a side business. So right now I would say I'm a full-time content creator. But when I started my business, I never thought I would be a full-time content creator. So when I started, I actually started a calligraphy business on the side of my nine to five job. So I sold greeting cards and I taught calligraphy workshops. And I did that for about a year on the side. Then it was about two years into working at the job. And then I thought, you know what? I I think it's kind of picking up a little bit. Like I wasn't making that much money either from my business. It was about $1,000 Canadian per month revenue. But I thought, I just don't have a lot of time because I'm working in my nine to five job. And I think, you know, I'm living at home. Like I'm very lucky. I don't have any big expenses. Uh, So why don't I just why don't I just quit my job and see what happens and see if I can turn this into something bigger. Um, And I'm very lucky. Uh, My family was, I would say, fairly supportive. They were okay supportive, actually. Um, But I would say, like, me living at home, like, I didn't have any big expenses. I was very grateful for that. So I felt like I could take the risk to do that. Um, So I quit my job to do the calligraphy. I did, I taught a whole lot of calligraphy workshops. And then six months later, COVID happened. (laughs) I had to cancel all the calligraphy workshops and figure something else out. So 
I transitioned from calligraphy workshops to coaching calligraphers on how to start a business. Yeah, I think, I think I'm curious about your journey from doing calligraphy into YouTube as well and how you're able to kind of make that full time right now. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. I started coaching calligraphers on how to start a business. And during COVID, I thought, okay, maybe I'll start a YouTube channel so I can funnel calligraphers into my email list Then maybe they could do the coaching. Um, and a mentor actually suggested that I use YouTube because I was... I was already posting blogs about how to start a calligraphy business. So he said, why don't you just turn the blogs into a YouTube video? You already have the content. You'll probably reach more calligraphers and then you'll probably get more clients. So I was like, okay, let me do that. Um, so when I started my YouTube channel, I never wanted to be like a big YouTuber. It was yeah. just... Okay, <laughs> yeah, I'm quite was... surprised because it's, <laughs> I, I, I thought that you've always wanted to be a YouTuber, but it seems like it was unintentional. Like you got into it for your coaching business and then you kind of got into it. Yeah, okay. So I actually, I've always wanted to be a blogger. Like I like writing. I never thought I would do YouTube because I was always the quiet, shy girl. I was like super... I was not confident at all, like in high school, in college. Uh, so I never thought I would do YouTube. But anyways, I started the YouTube because I thought, okay, maybe I can funnel people into my coaching. But then one year after doing YouTube, I felt like I'm not sure I'm that passionate about calligraphy. Like I do like it and I like coaching people, but I think I want to talk about more things. Around that time, I was also thinking about whether or not to continue with coaching because I felt like I did the coaching because it was just the next step in turning my business online. But I think I always knew that I didn't want to do coaching full time. So I had this midlife crisis in 2022 or 2021, actually. Can't remember. Anyways, so I decided to stop coaching and to just focus on YouTube because I thought, okay, I want to be a blogger, but I already have a YouTube now and it has like a thousand subscribers. Uh, so why don't I just make YouTube like my blog? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's, Makes sense. yeah, that's when I decided that, okay, I want to get bigger on YouTube and I want to talk about all kinds of topics like personal development, my business journey, and maybe just business in general. So that's when I made that pivot. But of course, I when I quit the coaching, that meant I had no more income. And yeah, I was, actually, that's it, yeah, that's the question I wanted to ask you. Like back then, you were making okay with your coaching income, right? Yeah, it was actually and it was okay. It was okay, and you were not making money with YouTube yet. Not really. Like I think around that time, I just got monetized, so maybe a hundred dollars a month. Okay, from and YouTube. you made that leap then. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I decided to not do coaching anymore. I, I, I think like just selling the coaching was, it, it was really stressful and it was really hard actually to get calligraphers to pay because calligraphers are like artists. They don't really have a business mindset. So they, they don't understand, a lot of people don't understand investing in yourself and like paying like a thousand dollars, right? To invest in yourself. Um, so I... When I quit the coaching, I thought, okay, well, now I don't have money. So let me, <laughs> so I did a whole bunch of things, Wendy. So I <laughs> delivered for Uber Eats for a month. I did pet sitting. Uh, the pet sitting was also a, I don't have money, but I want to travel kind of thing. So I did some pet sitting in the Okanagan in BC, uh, some other places in BC. So that was kind of like free travel. And I also started to... Uh, make some UGC content for a period underwear company. So that was like a si my side. I had like all these side gigs <laughs> mm -hmm. to try to make up for the like the lost income from coaching. Mm -hmm. And about, uh, I would say about four months after doing all of that, I had another idea to start an Etsy shop. That was okay. one of my other, let me just do a little thing to make money and until my YouTube gets bigger. So I started the Etsy shop selling Canva templates and um, I made a video for my YouTube channel called my first month on Etsy results. And that video actually brought me from 
uh, I had about 4,000 subscribers around that time. Mm -hmm. And that video helped me grow to 10,000 subscribers in one month. And I was making a lot more. So my basically from that video, my whole channel got bigger. That was the beginning of 2023. And that's when I decided, okay, let me do the my digital nomad thingy now. Cause like COVID, COVID is over. I'm finally making income online from content creation, not coaching. Let me go do this now. Cause I, I think this is like a good time. So I did seven months in Asia. That's when I visited you. Uh, now I'm back in BC and um, yeah, so during that time I started doing brand deals. I started, I'm still doing a little bit of coaching, uh, but it's not my main thing and I'm selling some courses, doing some affiliate stuff, but so yeah, I have like a, several income streams now, but I'm still trying to build it out right now. Yeah, and, and I know that at, as, as we're talking right now, right, you're going through a period of like figuring out what's next for you, like figuring out your place on the internet and like your identity as a content creator and stuff like that. Um, so right now, as we are talking, what are some new discovery that you've had about yourself? Or what do you want your journey in content creation to be like at this moment? Mm, yeah. So actually for a couple of months, I've been feeling pretty stuck with my content and I haven't been posting that much on YouTube. And I think like, I'm very, very happy with my YouTube right now, but I'm not that happy with what I'm talking about right now. And I think it, it gets complicated because when you start making videos and the videos start doing well, you feel like you have to make videos for the algorithm and for views. So a lot of my videos were about side hustles and starting an Etsy shop. But I think what I really want to do, and I this is like what I've been thinking about for the last one to two months, is I don't know if I want to talk that much about business and be a business teacher kind of person. Uh, I actually want to share more of my journey, just create things, get inspired, and write things so actually something new that I'm doing is I actually started a blog, like a personal, uh, kind of like, it's a personal brand website, but it also has a blog on it. And I'm gonna write about my journey. I also started this new thing called Calligraphy Poems for the Soul, where basically you can, you tell me something that's going on in your life and I'll write you a poem with my calligraphy and I mail it to you. So that's just an experiment I'm trying out to, Cause I wanna, I feel like I wanna be more creative and I felt a bit stuck with my content. But yeah, that's something I'm like working through right now. And I'm working with a life coach and I think coaching is like, I've coached people, but I've also gotten a lot of coaching. And I think it's so uh, like so helpful. And in all the pivots that I made throughout the years, I basically pretty much always had either a business coach or a life coach, or I was in some kind of uh, group program. Yeah. So it, wow. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm really excited for you in this new journey. Like I've been seeing this like poems for the soul content on Instagram, <clears throat> and I'm I'm pretty excited about it. And I feel like you have always been someone who just, you know, that you have a creative soul, and like you really want to pursue something that is creative. And I, I feel like that's why we kind of really connected in that way because I'm someone who is like that too. But I think mm -hmm. for me, I always have this big struggle of concerning about money. So I know mm. you mentioned that you are pretty lucky in a sense that you don't have big expenses. You don't have like parents to take care of and stuff like that, right? So in that sense, that is really lucky. But I think it is, it is what it is, right? And for me, when it comes to going into this journey, I always have that concern about money. And mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure throughout your journey, especially the time that, like, that, that four months that you were doing Uber Eats and all that yeah, stuff, all the right? Things. Yeah, those things, I remember that was when I actually, like, in a way, reconnected with your content. Like, one of the early YouTube videos that I got caught, on, uh, caught up with is um, the one where you were pet sitting in a, in a van, trailer? Like a camper van. Yeah, in a trailer <laughs> van. And that was when I was like, whoa, what is Dina doing with her life right now? <laughs> um, but that was, that was really interesting. And that actually got me really curious to follow your journey. And that's when mm. I kind of 
started following your content again. And I'm pretty sure that's how, that is why your followers have been following you as well. Um, you are very real in your journey. And I remember mm, earlier you, you said that you are, you've always been an introverted person. Like you've just been shy and not confident. But I feel like because of that, um, of course, throughout the years, you've become a lot more confident in your journey. But yeah. I feel like you have that personality where it feels very relatable. Like mm. you don't have that, hey, look at me. I'm Miss Popular or, or I'm Miss like socialite kind of person on the internet. You're just an everyday girl that mm -hmm. helps us Thank feel you. so relatable. And that's why Aww. you have a very well-deserving growth on the internet. Like I can say that like... It, on behalf of all of your fans right now, right? Um, but yeah, so coming back to, I guess, what I wanted to talk about is like that fear of not making enough money uh, mm -hmm. to cover for Very your life, familiar. Right? Yeah, so like during that period of time, what were some mindset shifts or like what are the things that your coaches have talked to you about that has helped you to kind of work through that period of time? Yeah, yeah. So I think the money thing was difficult for me throughout the whole journey like when I quit my job and during COVID like I think every even now I'm still I feel like I'm still working on reaching my financial goals but yeah during that time where I was making the pivot to full-time content creation I think I in my head I knew like I just believed that I would get bigger and I I had a feeling that I would get bigger by the end of 2022. I wrote it down in my journal. Like I, yeah, it was just like a gut feeling that I, I think I meant to do this. Like, I think I meant to be sharing things and I think my YouTube will get bigger. And I really believe that. I just had that feeling. So that was one thing. And then, yeah, I was trying to, I had so many like of these side, random side gigs, right? And I was just, I was just trying to, stay afloat until like YouTube got bigger and the money from all those random things that I was doing it I would say it was kind of enough for me to live off of and just like pay for everyday things oh yeah during COVID I did get a car for me and my dad so then I did end up having like a monthly recurring <laughs> expense that was pretty yeah. large were there any like practical steps that you tell yourself you have to have this amount of savings and if it ever goes below that, then you have to get back to a job? Like, were there any logical or practical steps that comes into it? So I think I never, I never went into like debt or anything, but my bank account was very small. And I think for me, it was just, but I, I felt so lucky that every single month I just had enough at that time, I did have savings. So I knew that even if I had a month where I didn't make a lot of money, I would be okay. Having the savings really helped me like have a peace of mind. Or I, I, was, I was thinking like, okay, I can keep doing this. And if it does get to a point where I'm uncomfortable with how much is in my bank account, I can always get a job, right? Anytime I can get a job. Uh, but I just, I never got to that point where I had to, well, I did kind of, I, I tried like all these Uber Eats is kind of a side job. Yeah. Um, and it's also like, oh, if I really don't have money, let me just do Uber Eats. I make up like $20 an hour. I could just drive for six to eight hours a day <laughs> if I was really desperate. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I just made sure my, I had savings, but if, if the bank account was getting low, I would like, I would, my plan was to get a job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that makes sense. And I, I think like recently, like I told you, I've been always been having like this money, um, limiting belief with me. Right. And that is something that I've been reading a book and it's been helping me to get through it. Like the question was, um, if you were to really lose every single bit of sense that you have in your bank account right now, right? How would you mm -hmm. feel? And mm -hmm. I'm quite surprised that my answer to that is like, I actually feel okay. Because I know that no matter what, I'll be able to make money. Um, mm. With the skill sets that I have, like you said, like you, you can still go to Uber Eat and work for like six to eight hours if you really need <laughs> yeah. to. Um, and we are very fortunate that we live at a time and age where really there's all sorts of 
ways for you to make money as long as you are willing to do it. And I think for a lot of people, definitely like the pride and ego comes into the place. Like mm. as someone who's working in the sea levels, like, oh, I don't want to get to the place where I'm working over it. It's how embarrassing that that is, right? And I think that that definitely gets into the way. But I'm, I'm slowly transitioning into the mindset that, yeah, even if... I were to lose my job and to lose every single sense that I have right now, there will always be a way for us to make money. And yeah. that has been helping me a lot into like just moving further into my creative journey. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I think um, like that book you read where I asked you the question, if you lost everything, how would you feel? I think that's actually really great that you feel like you would be okay because you can always make money so I started to (laughs) I started to think about how would I I think I would be kind of stressed out but then I would I think I would be okay too uh but I would I think I would be pretty stressed um and yeah I would probably go look for a part-time job and then go do something on social media see if I can grow an audience um but yeah I think that's it's really great that like you trust yourself that you can, like you have the skills, you have the knowledge um, to make money, even if you lost everything, right? As long as yeah. you have your current self, you'll be okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I mean, like I would be pretty stressed out too, but like it's, it's going to be like a short period of time, right? And you're like, okay, it's time to get into the survival mode and get things going. And, and I feel like we just know that as time passes and like we've, I guess like as we get older we have more wisdom and like experiences from the past that would help us um to to grow and like i think there are just a lot of ways that we can actually still survive in this world yeah yeah and i think even if if we lost everything like i think i would be okay with having a bit of debt at Mm -hmm. first just so i could get things going Um, but then I think I would really have to trust myself that, yeah, I can make, if, if I'm going down the business route, like, oh, I, maybe I'd go into debt for a bit, but then I really have to trust that I can do it and I work hard. So since we are in the topic of money, right? Um, I know you've been pretty open about your income streams on YouTube. Are you open with like how much you are making with this income stream? Because I think it would be a very interesting information for my listeners to know like how much you're actually making with like all these different sources of income yeah I love sharing this and I actually have like YouTube videos sharing like how much I made I don't know if you saw them um so with YouTube specifically uh so with YouTube AdSense it's been pretty consistent for the last uh one and a half years so I make about two uh let's say okay let's do USD and USD numbers it's like uh, 1700 USD per month from YouTube AdSense on average. And, and what's your current numbers like? How many subscribers? What's your like yeah. watch hour like? Uh, does that, that, that mix into, that plays into the equation, right? Of how much so, you're making? Yeah, so the views matter, but number of subscribers actually don't matter. So one year ago, let's say I had uh, 30,000 subscribers. Now I have 70,000 but I'm still making the same amount from YouTube AdSense as one year ago because my views have stayed very consistent. So every 24 hours, I get, uh, I would say 5,000 views on my long form videos, 5,000 views. And my, my uh, like CPM and RPM, though this is a little technical, like my revenue per mil and what's CPM again? Is it cost per impression? Oh, yeah. Cost right? per mil. That's the cost that advertisers pay YouTube. So anyways, in terms of if anybody knows CPM and RPM, my mine are pretty high because my niche is business education. So companies pay YouTube more to advertise. Whereas let's say if you're in a beauty, in the beauty niche or clothing, your RPM is not going to be as high. Oh. Um, so my RPM right now is about twelve dollars per per like one thousand views, sort of. Oh. But beauty niche would be like three dollars. Yeah. Oh, okay. So my niche is one of the higher ones. 
I do have some brand deals too. Right now I'm, I don't have a lot, but from brand deals for an integrated video, I could make anywhere from, I would say $800 USD to $1,600 USD per one integrated ad in a video, which means like about 60 to 90 seconds of an ad of a company. Uh, so brand deals are good, but it's kind of inconsistent. And I feel like I really want to be aligned with those companies. So I'm actually starting to do less because I'm trying to figure out what my content is going to be about. And what else? I have some affiliate income, um, which I make about, I would say, 300 to $500 a month from affiliate programs. Um, it's mainly like three affiliate programs where I'm making the most of my money. Uh, Amazon Associates program, I'm making about $15 per month. So okay. Amazon is not great for affiliate okay. programs <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> for me. Yeah. Uh, and then I have some, I still do calligraphy sometimes. So I'll do a calligraphy workshop maybe for a company that'll be about a $1,000 uh, depending on how many people Sometimes I teach a calligraphy workshop in Vancouver. I still do some coaching and I have some courses, but those are very inconsistent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to give you a, an idea of how much I'm making. So from all those income streams, every month I make about 5,000 to 8,000 Canadian dollars revenue. Okay. Wow. Yeah. But my goal is 10,000 to 20,000. Yeah. That makes sense. That's like a, that sounds like a next the next uh, a logical next step for you to target yeah right? yeah and I'm really excited for you to like just keep pursuing what feels right for you and get there in that journey because then I think you will feel happy to receive all this wealth that's coming your way too yeah and I think it'll be easier to make money like I think yes. if I'm really doing what I love like that like my energy will be so good and, that I, I, and then my audience will grow. Yeah, and then I think the money will just come very easily. And I yeah. don't think I'm there yet. I'm, I don't think I'm doing what I want to do 100%. But I feel like you're getting there, though. Like, yeah, I think I'm like, getting there. Yeah, like even just as someone who is just like viewing your content, I can feel you being more aligned with what you are sharing on, on, on the internet. Um, and definitely, I feel like it seems to be easier for you to show up now compared to like say two months ago when mm. you were pretty much not showing up on Instagram <laughs> oh my god yeah <laughs> my Instagram was so quiet for so long but now now I'm trying to do more <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah so like that's why like energetically like I can feel that you are actually like moving towards where you want to go yeah 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 thank you <laughs> yeah all right. Thank you so much for being so transparent about it. I feel like that definitely, like I've been seeing that you share these videos, but like to be completely honest, sometimes I avoid watching these videos um, because mm. I, I, I think you would know where I'm coming from. Like I support you as my friend and I'm really, really happy for you for your success. But like sometimes seeing other friends achieving um, better success in ways that I'm not there yet it feels a little bit like the self-comparison mode starts kicking in so I just mm. avoid completely to the place where I feel comfortable enough to check it out um, I'm, I'm pretty much at a stage where I'm really focusing on my own journey and what I want to do and sometimes I just avoid <laughs> watching such content yeah I relate yeah. especially yeah. when it's someone you know from like a long time ago if it's some other person that I don't know from university or somewhere and I see how much they make, it's kind of whatever, right? Yeah. But correct. I think it's especially when it's like a friend and they're doing something similar. Like I, I also feel that way too. Like, oh my God, I don't know if I want to know how much they make. <laughs> yeah. I get yeah. it. I get a bit like self-conscious or insecure too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. But thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Like, I, I just want it to be, I, I know that you wouldn't mind. Like that's, because I feel like you understand how the journey of getting towards where you want to go um, can be filled with a lot of doubts and negative self-talk in the yeah. head as you are going, right? So do you have any tips for anyone who is pursuing a, a career in the creative entrepreneurship 
right? Like, in this journey, it is not going to be easy. We both know that. And there's going to be a lot of moments where doubts kicked in, all the negative self-talks that's kicking in. So what would you advise um, for someone who is going through that? So I think at the beginning, people definitely will have imposter syndrome and self-doubt. But I think I still have that. So it's something that may not go away or like every time you um, are trying to, uh, maybe you're launching something new or it's a new product or you're doing something new, something, you might feel that way. So it's knowing that it may never go away, what can we do? So I think for me, what really helped me at the beginning, uh, let's say me starting my YouTube channel, I was so... I was so, I was unsure about it. Like I had the idea to do it for months, but I just never do it. It was so scary, like showing up on video in you on YouTube. Like Instagram is different. I feel like Instagram is kind of whatever. So for me, it was just like taking a small step and not committing fully. Like when I was thinking about YouTube, I thought, let me just make one video, like, and not oh, I need to make a video every single week. My thought was, let me just make one video and see how I feel. Then after that, maybe I'll make another video. So I think every single time that I did something new, in my mind, it was an experiment. Like, let me just try this and see how I feel so that you don't feel a lot of pressure to do it. You could always scrap it, right? But I think once you do it for the first time or you start a little bit on the whatever project it is, you gain a little bit of confidence. And I think that's really how we can deal with imposter syndrome and self-doubt. It's like, you just gotta do a little bit of it. And then you actually, most of the time, feel a lot better because yeah. you did it. Yes. So I would suggest like, just seeing things as an experiment. You don't have to commit if you don't want to. Yeah. So like breaking it down into baby steps and just make micro commitments throughout your journey, right? Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's how I started with my podcast journey as well. Like I just started mm. and I'm like, you know what? I started without a clear intention of where it's going to take me. I just knew that I wanted to create content that's a little bit more in-depth, that I can go deep into the topic that I want to talk about because I've been creating short form content for a couple of years and I just always feel like I don't get in-depth with whatever I want to talk about. Yeah, and it's hard with I, short form. Yeah, I started off without a clear intention, it's just like, okay, let's try doing weekly episodes. Let's, let's do it. And then it's been 40 episodes now. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. 40 already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I love your podcast. Like I think Aww. it's, it's such a relaxing and like uplifting podcast to listen to. And I don't put you on double the speed. Cause sometimes when I listen to podcasts, I just want the information, yeah, but then with yours, I, I actually listen on regular speed because it's so nice. It's like, oh, my friend's talking to me. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm glad. Like, I feel like, I mean, that's that's how it's designed to be. Like, I feel like if you talk to me in person, sometimes I do speak a lot faster than on my podcast. Um, but the intention of the podcast is for it to be a space where you can tune in and actually kind of wind down and yeah. listen to your friend rant to you at night before going to bed or stuff like that. Um, so yeah, like that was how I kind of like committed into creating a podcast as well. And I feel like, yeah, like you said, micro commitments, just getting into it first and thinking of it as experiment. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of times people put too much pressure on the things that they're about to do, like starting a YouTube channel, like, oh, that means that I'm putting, um, I'm airing my entire life out there. Like people are going to judge me and all that. And I have a lot of friends coming to me looking for advice and, and, and I was like, why are you holding back? Like, no one's going to watch your first few videos. Like, yeah. in a way, like your first few videos, you're probably still starting out. It's going to take a while for people to discover you. So I hope that takes the pressure off you from being so afraid to move forward and just do it at the start, right? Well, I think something that has been so helpful for me is like having friends who are also doing the same thing and at the same stage, um, and also like having a community, but coaches are also helpful, but just having 
people you can talk to about this. Even if it's joining somebody's membership and you're in a Facebook group or a Discord or something, even something like that could be so helpful because when you're doing it yourself, and usually there's actually not a lot of people becoming like full-time entrepreneurs or content creators, uh, at least in the average friend group of a the average person, right? Not a lot of people are. So when you find some people that you can like share what you're going through, I think it's it's so helpful and it was so helpful for me. Yeah, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, like for me, I think my average friends, I like friends that I meet from high school or university or like even like my fiance's friends, right? I barely know anyone who is into the journey of entrepreneurship or, or content creation. Like I had to make my way out to find friends who I can relate that are doing these things as well. So we are talking about self-doubt and we've been talking about how you are kind of in a journey of moving towards more creative creation of your your own on, on the internet, right? I'm quite curious to see, like, how do you think the future of your career will look like? Ooh, juicy <laughs> question, Wendy. <laughs> Okay, so I definitely think, so my old dream was to be a digital nomad. I, I, so I got there, which I'm very happy. I'm very grateful for that experience. Now my dream is basically to be inspired every day and to create and share beautiful things and my journey with people. Um, so from now on, what I'm trying to do is, I feel like I have to change a bit of, how I work because usually I'll do my morning routine and then sit down to work but I think like I don't know about you but if you just sit down and then you're like let me make an Instagram post now <laughs> you just it's really hard to come up with an idea so I think it's figuring out a process where I can get inspired jot down the ideas and then take action on those from starting now I'm trying to just be more inspired and to just create from like my heart and not do it so much for the algorithm or for the views or the or this money or this or that whatever I'm doing a lot of little experiments like the calligraphy poems for the soul that's kind of an experiment which right now I enjoy it I don't know if I'll continue doing it but for now it's pretty fun for me so I think I'll continue with experimenting being creative getting inspired and I have no idea what that looks like, but it will be some kind of, it will be content, I will be writing, I will be doing my YouTube, I will be doing my email list. <laughs> mm -hmm. But what exactly that looks like, I think it's, I'm still figuring it out. Okay, I, I think yeah. you have a good visual of how it looks like. Mm. And, and I think that's the most important part because when you have an idea of how you want your day-to-day -day life to be like or how you want your, yeah, like your, your working process. Um, I think because we come from business school, we come from like a corporate background, right? We always, we were very used to goals in a very masculine way where it's a big number, a yeah. big very audacious target and then you are moving towards it. But I feel like we are moving towards an enlightenment that... We, we know what we want in terms of the process and the journey. And that should be how life is about, right? I really think that it's always about the journey of getting there and not so much about the number. Like it's, I mean, it's good to have a target to guide you towards where you're going. Um, but I, I think I'm very, very excited for you to see what's eventually gonna like unveil mm. for you in this journey because I think you have a good idea of what you want already and mm, I'm, yeah thank I'm, you I'm excited I'm so and excited. I'm excited for you too yes. I'm excited for you too yeah so yes thank you so much Dina for coming on I really enjoyed our conversation and um, I hope that you have inspired our listeners to pursue a life that is more creative to be unafraid to chase their dreams, right? And thank you so much for being so transparent with all of your sharing. I really, really appreciate that part of you on the internet. Um, not just to <laughs> us you. as friends, right? But also to all of your, your audience and everybody. So everyone, if you are listening, be sure to check out Dina on social media, whether it's YouTube or Instagram or subscribe to her newsletters or check out her new blog. Is the new blog out yet? 
It is, but I only have one blog post. Okay, yes, but check it out. I'll, I'll include all the details <laughs> that you can find Dina on the show notes and um, we will see you in the next episode. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Dina. Bye-bye.